and it's the ending of the year, it's December. So a lot of things may be on your list that you would have wished to tick off or oh, so that you would go for Thanksgiving on 31st. And these things have not happened. But you need to not forget that you are highly esteemed. Your esteem in God's presence and in life is not based on you thinking of, oh, I'm married. I plan to marry and now I'm married. Your expectation. Oh, I plan to build a house and now I've built it. Your expectation. I was seeing the picture of God as a father calling you beloved. And you said, yes, daddy. And he says, you are not a failure. I am not disappointed in you. I am proud of you. I am pleased with you. I know you have heard voices in your head that are telling you that you're not worthy, that are telling you I'm a failure, that are telling you I'm a disappointment. But that voice is not the voice of your father. That voice is not the voice of your shepherd. You know, as scripture says that, the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. And if it is the voice of another, they would not respond. And your father is saying, that is not my voice. I am not saying I am disappointed in you. In today's video, I want to encourage you with this, that God is calling you beloved. Even when you feel like you failed, he says, I still love you. I am not disappointed in you. So you can pause and say with me, I am beloved. Let me hear you say it. I am beloved. The first point I want to speak to you is that God is not disappointed in you. The fact is that as humans, most times you have father figures in your life and you don't want to disappoint them because you feel like if you get them angry, if you do something, you know, that is wrong, they will be disappointed in you, which it's very well understood. They are disappointed because they had an expectation that should you should do better. You should become better. You should be better. But why did I say God is not disappointed in you? Because God knows your capacity. Because God knows your future. God knows that he cannot put an expectation on you that you cannot bear. He does not put an expectation on any of us that we cannot bear. Because he knows our capacity. He knows our frailty. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strength. Because of how much he knows us, he only wants us to get to know his heart that much. Even though we cannot amass to know so much of how much he loves us, but we should aim, like Paul said, that he is longing to know the length, the breadth, the width, and the height of this love of God that passes all understanding. And when we get to that place, we will recognize and know that he is not disappointed in us. So he hasn't put any expectation like that on us. For that reason, God is not disappointed. And I would like you to check through scripture. God spoke this to me and it was so liberating to me. And it said to me, have you ever seen any way in the scripture that God said to someone, I am disappointed in you? He knows we are human. Yes, God has gotten angry and punished people for their sins because of the consequences of their sin because he is a just God. But God has not told anybody, I am disappointed in you. Even when Cain killed his brother Abel, the tone I wish God would have used in Genesis chapter 4 was God going to Cain and telling him, why would you kill your brother? I'm going to deal with you. You know, maybe running down the cause on him. But God went to Cain and started telling Cain, where is your brother Abel? What a tone. Like, why are you approaching this guy like that? As a father or as a human, I know you fucked up. I know you've done wrong. I would come to you. I would lash out on you. Guy. But God is here saying, where's your brother Abel? God is even trying to get him to converse. He says, am I my brother's keeper? And God says, the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me. And still, because of Cain's pride, he could not see that God was trying to converse with him to make him see himself. Maybe had he been he saw himself, he would have told God, I'm sorry. But he was trying to be defensive. Same thing in the story of Adam and Eve. When Adam fell, God went to him, Adam, where are you? It was not a question of God saying, I don't know where you are, where are you? It was a question of God saying, I want you to be self-aware. And that is a tone of love when I look at that. In every place in scripture, David felt God, he slept with Uriah's wife and killed Uriah, sent him to the battle and killed him. God came to David and said to him, sent Nathan to him, and then Nathan brought this very parable 
to make David see himself. And then David was so angry. He would be such a man that would, you know, go to take someone's one sheep when he has enough. And Nathan told him, you are the one. But David did something different. He bowed on his knee and told God, I am sorry. That's how he wrote Psalm 51. God is not disappointed in you. And that is the very reason that scripture says, I will not forget, forsake you. I will not forget you. Neither would I leave you. Now, I used to feel like when I fell, I have not met up the standard in the scripture, or maybe my humanity gets the best of me, that God is very angry at me and that I am no more loved by God. But over time, God made me realize that he is not angry with me. He knows me better than I know me. So he loves me even when I fail. And Isaiah 54 really solidified that belief. The scripture says, though, just as I saw in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. And this was a prophecy that God spoke after Isaiah 53 that he talked about Christ coming to die and take on himself all our sins, all our frailties, all our wrongs. So because of Christ's finished work, God will never again be angry with us and punish us. That is why we are enjoying the grace we are enjoying in this dispensation. And what does that say? Does that say go and sin and do anything and come back that God will accept you? No. It says because of this much love that God has for you, as Paul wrote in the book of Corinthians, it says, let this love compel you. Let this love bring you closer to love him because he first loved you. Number two, God does not think about you the way you feel about you. The feelings you have and the voices in your head would probably make you feel dejected, get you down, get you to beat yourself because you feel like, why did I fail again? You feel guilty, you feel condemned, but God doesn't condemn you. God doesn't think you're condemned. That is not his thoughts for you. Psalms 139 says, How precious are your thoughts for me, O God. They are more than the grains of sands on the seashore. And even if I want to number them, I cannot count them all. So God's thoughts are precious. God's design is thought towards me and you are so precious. They are beyond what we could understand. And that is God calling us beloved. He says, I love you. I am beloved to him. You are beloved to him. That is why he thinks precious thoughts about you. He sees the fact that if you trust him, you'll be able to overcome the things that are overcoming you right now. You'll be able to overcome the things that you are struggling with right now. So he still calls you beloved. And that is the place you need to know that you are behaving like the prodigal son who left the father's house with all those resources that the father had. And those resources were at his disposal and decided to take himself out of the father's presence to go and suffer. But when he realized himself, because we are all like that, we are in the presence of God with so much abundance that we cannot take from him because we think so small about us. We feel so, we allow our feelings to overwhelm us. Scripture tells us clearly, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. But we come to the place of accepting that our ways is the better way. We come to a place of thinking that the things we think about ourselves is the higher thought. Instead of us to leave this lower place that we are in, to get to the higher place, which is accept his thoughts, accept his ways. That is the higher ground for us. And by that, we will come to Proverbs 3 that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, which means my understanding, my thinking, my feelings are on all on the lower place. So when I come to God, I am going in his way. When I decide to not lean on my understanding, just to trust him wholly, I am coming up on the up, on the higher place. And that is the place that I would be affirmed that I am beloved. That is why in Psalms 103 verse 10, scripture says that God does not treat us according to our sins. God does not deal with us according to our wrongs. God does not deal with us as we deserve. Because we deserve bad, we deserve hell, we deserve bad things because of our thoughts, our actions, our behaviors, our feelings. But God still says you are beloved. I know you don't feel like you are because you feel like I've not done enough. Jesus never did any miracle when he walked on earth. And the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So God doesn't want you to do anything 
before he affirms you, before he tells you who you are. He's telling you who you are so that if you are not on that level, you should come up to become who you are. The next thing you need to know that you are beloved is that God loves you. Now, you would not understand how much God loves you until you think about how much God loves Christ Jesus, his son. The Bible says that he loves you so much that he gave you Christ. And it's so baffling to me when I read Romans chapter 8 that talks about if God spare not his only begotten son, but gave him up for us all, how shall God not through Christ give us every other thing? Now, how I see that plainly as the scripture states is that if God could give us Christ and deny us healing, it means healing is higher than Christ. But God would not give you Christ and then deny you the good things of life. It would mean maybe these things are higher than Christ for him to give you Christ and deny you these things. So it means here that God gave you his best. It means every other thing under, they come under him. So once I receive this best gift that he has given to me, through this gift of Christ Jesus, healing is there, salvation is there, deliverance is there, riches and wealth is there, wisdom is in him. That's why scripture says that he is the firstborn of all creation. He is the preeminence for everything that you need in life. Christ Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So by the time you realize how much God loves Christ and realize that God gave Christ up for you, if God did not pay Christ, you should know how much you are loved for him to give Christ for you. Every other thing you need are simple things to receive. You just need to believe God and accept the number one gift he has given you because that is the gift of his love. That is the greatest show of love that God has shown you. And if you refuse to accept the gift of love that God has brought your way through Christ Jesus and you are trying to ask God to prove that he loves you by giving you a husband, it means you are trying to devalue the gift that God gave you at first. His perfect gift. If you are trying to prove God's love by telling God, unless you give me this job, I'm not going to believe that you love me. Unless you give me this healing, it means you are trying to minimize this abundance gift of grace. God wants you to come to the realization that he loves you so much because he gave his best gift for you. That is a show of love. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and gave his son as a propitiation for our sins. What manner of love? The next thing you need to know that you are beloved is that God highly esteems you. God places you in a place of honor through Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says that we are accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? Christ is the beloved. And we are accepted, which is the word accepted means we are highly favored, we are highly esteemed, we are highly honored in the beloved who is Christ. And from the last point I just spoke about, you knowing that God loves you because he gave his best gift, he gave you the best, it means this is an honor already for you to receive this best gift. And through this best gift, you are highly esteemed, you are highly favored. What do you really need in life? That is a burden. As I'm recording this video, this is 2023 and it's the ending of the year, it's December. So a lot of things may be on your list that you would have wished to tick off or so that you would go for Thanksgiving on 31st. And these things have not happened. But you need to not forget that you are highly esteemed. Your esteem in God's presence and in life is not based on you ticking off Oh, I'm married. I plan to marry and now I'm married. Your expectation. Oh, I plan to build a house and now I've built it. Your expectation. All those things are good things. All the good things you desire, God really wants to give it to you. But then God does not want you to measure your life or measure his love based on these things that you get to have. But you, you need to measure his love and how much he esteems you based on his son that he gave for you. And when you do that, you are honoring God for the gift that he gave you. And he can give you more. That is you showing appreciation. 
Whenever we come to a place of accepting Christ Jesus into our lives and decide to live and follow his way, we are telling God, I appreciate this gift. I know that this gift is such an amazing gift. He is a transformative gift. This is the gift that transforms me. This is the gift that made my life new. This is the gift that got me out of masturbation. This is the gift that redeemed my life. This is the gift that keeps giving because he saves me on a daily. And this is the gift that brings me joy and great things, patience, kindness. It makes my heart good. I hope this video is beneficial to you and is a blessing. Let me know in the comment section how this video has blessed you. And do not forget that you are beloved. Your thumbs up, your like on this video does this channel a great favor because it helps YouTube algorithm spread the video to many people who would like to watch. Do not forget to hit the like button and share this video to your friends to watch and be reminded that God calls them beloved.